Hey sisters, I'm so excited. We're gonna do a get ready with me routine. I just got a brand new palette, got my palette expander removed. So we're gonna beat that mug like Chris Brown on a second date, so let's do it. It's another day in quarantine. It's the only teen Jeffrey Epstein hasn't gotten his hands on. Like I mentioned in my last video, I recently moved to the neighborhood. My old place was like smack dab in the middle of West Hollywood. I was like living in a friend's condo rent free for like a good few years like he was really doing me a, a favor but eventually wanted to sell it because he moved out of the area and i was just thinking like how can i hold on to this like amazing condo like it's such a such a good situation for me so i was actually considering like pretending the place was haunted so i could like scare off realtors or any potential buyers something straight out of full house season four i ended up throwing like the the bed sheet over me and like hiding, but then they ended up just recruiting me for the KKK. I was like, whatever. Both are scary. Uh, before I moved here, I actually lived with this guy, older gentleman named Jerry, who a uh, nice guy, simple, easygoing, like generous enough, but he would just like small talk me to death. Just like this guy would knock on my door every day. What's going on with the traffic today? I don't get it. Like one day you can just go driving straight down Sunset and the next it's just back, backed up completely. Or uh, what's going on with the weather? It's been raining a lot lately. The guy small talked me to death. He spent like half of his time in Santa Barbara. So it was like another situation where I got the entire place to myself pretty much. It was great. It was like this villa overlooking a pool and hot tub. Really nice. He's like, you know, Santa Barbara doesn't have much diversity. They only have one gay bar in Santa, Mar Santa Barbara, but it's only open on Sundays. So I guess you can only be a gay on Sundays in Santa Barbara. That, uh, that took, took it out of me. I was just like, enough. I can't get small talk anymore by you. I just can't do it. So now I live here. I have my own place. And I'm getting to know it really nice since uh, the government mandate to stay inside. I am single and it can get kind of lonely just being here by myself. I've been considering like, I've been actually craving getting a dog recently. I didn't think I, I would be, but I think I'm ready to take that plunge. I was thinking maybe like a black lab or chocolate lab or even like a meth lab. I heard they're really energetic, so. I've been trying not to watch the news because we know it's actual uh, it's a fiction. The news is fiction. That's what I've, I've come to realize through my years on the earth. So, my, so many of the things that they say, you really just can't trust. I don't want to be one of those people, it's like fake news, fake news. But I saw the, someone who used to work at like CNN says so like, yeah, we have like stock, a stock photo library of like a bunch of different photos. So we, uh, for the COVID footage, we use some stuff from like Hurricane Katrina and just some basic archive footage of people standing in lines. Like to me, that's off. It's like you're creating this manufacturing of a, a story that's, that's not reality to me. It's like if the news actually cared about people, they would talk about solutions and ways to improve people's health during all of this. But we're not seeing that. We're seeing fear, fear, fear. It's like, does the news exist primarily to make money? Yes. Do they care that they're instilling fear and negativity with people? No. Should I keep asking rhetorical questions? Maybe. I don't know. When I heard about the whole like, Epstein committing suicide thing. I was like, whoa, hold my adrenochrome. She's just like, doesn't add up, but the news just like says it with a smile on their face and you're supposed to just eat up everything they say. I don't believe it. And it's like, it's not like, what's better, CNN or Fox News or which, which part of the political spectrum are you on? And it's not about political affiliation. It's about liberation and freedom for all humans. It's that simple. We don't have to get bogged down into these divisive categories and fall for all this rhetoric that just keeps us like at ends with each other. It's not worth it. But I think people are still trying to 
come up with ways to move on and create a, a world that still is happy, safe, and functioning. We want some semblance of normalcy. We don't want to be confined to our apartments and houses for the rest of our lives. I heard that the Backstreet Boys were actually doing concerts in completely empty stadiums. This was from last summer, but you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. And there's also still like the uh, food service people that are like, delivering food, like all the Amazon delivery workers. Everyone's ordering from Amazon lately. All the Amazon workers are like busting their ass and some of them are actually going on strike because they, they wanted better working conditions. They didn't feel safe like risking their lives for what, $15 an hour? And they're actually considering going on strike because they wanted supplies to, to maintain their safety at their, at their workplace. Amazon said like, we can't give you gloves or masks, but we'll throw in Mrs. Maisel season three. I think they went for it. I don't know. It can just be a scary time right now because we don't know what's going on. And that ultimately comes down to our like existential crisis of, okay, I need to stay alive and I, like, I don't know if I'm going to die. Like we never really know, but when life is functioning in a way that looks the same that we're used to, we feel a little bit more at ease. But when it's just chaos like it is now, we're just like, could this be my last, could the last few months on earth? But that's part of the fun. Like if we knew where we were gonna die, can you imagine like a, a child with a terminal illness? Oh, little Johnny's a middle-aged eight-year-old. Uh, he's having a little midlife crisis going on. It's better to not know. Um, so yeah, like I said, single, trying my best to uh, be happy with where I am in my life and not try to rely on others to bring happiness or comfort or anything like that. But I feel like my spirit has taken like such a beat down from relationships I have had. I know they're all like learning experiences and you grow and you're nurtured and you're more ready for that next relationship and your soul is expanding and you're learning things about yourself and you're loving yourself more. But breakups are difficult and they're kind of like a, a mind F because like you go from being so close to someone to having no contact whatsoever. At least in my case with the restraining orders that have been taken out on me. You know what I mean though. I feel like recently over the last few months, it's been a lot of like disappointments like in that department for me. I was talking to this guy for a while who uh, I thought we had a vibe, but he asked me if I was on the autism spectrum. And I said, uh, no, I think what you're seeing here is called talent. Okay, pal. And I was like, well, honestly, I don't have Time Warner, but I probably am on the spectrum. Let's be real. I think actually what ended that was one day we were like FaceTiming. And I was like, honestly, dude, you're not a dead end, but you're pretty much a cul-de-sac. Cause he was like getting out of a relationship with a girl. He's like, I don't know, like we want to have kids. Like, and it's like, I don't have time for this. This just seems like a, a a waste of time for me and I made that comment and maybe it affected him more than I, more than I thought it would. I don't know. I also, I don't know if it's like what I'm putting out, but I feel like I just end up attracting like these closet case type of guys. Oh, you know, I have a girl, Ugh, I'm pretty much straight. I only do this like once a month. It's like, that's a subscription. Okay, you're subscribed to this. I don't know. It's just tough dating here. I don't know if it's like a LA thing. You have all these guys that are just think their poop don't stink. They're just so high on their own supply that they're just, I don't know. They're so cocky and the ego is just so inflated. I was dating this like one upper for a little bit. It's the type of guy that'd be like, oh, you know, uh, I saw the Kim Kardashian sex tape, but uh, the, the book was better. 
one of those like snobby type of guys. I don't know, it's just, I thought it would be easier, but I'm realizing a lot of people are in the same boat. So, it's nice to get some quality time with yourself. I just didn't think at this age, like I just turned 30, I didn't think that I would still be like, oh, I'm single. But sometimes you think you're gonna get that white picket fence and end up following for a white picketing West Pro Baptist Church member, you know? It's like all the apps nowadays, I feel like no one takes it seriously. It's just transaction after transaction. Back in the 90s with like AOL Instant Messenger, there was more accountability for making plans there. You weren't getting ghosted and people flaking on you all the time. When you're on AIM, like you make a plan to meet at the mall at 6 p.m. and you better effing hope it works out because there's no cell phones or texts or emails being exchanged to reconcile if something goes wrong. I miss those days. I don't know, but it's, life's weird. I didn't, wasn't even gonna bring this up, but me and my cousin have actually been like sexting. It's so wrong. My, my cousin and I, it's so just all in the family joke. I'm not from the South. I don't know. I don't even bother with these apps, I assume. I think the number is increasing, but I assume like 75% of who are on these apps are catfish. And they don't even try anymore. They'll just like grab like a, a Google image. They'll grab the first one they see, they'll just type in like hot guy and that's their profile. It's like catfishing used to be an art and now it's just become this low effort activity. Like step it up. I don't know. All like the, the jargon you see on there too. Can you host? It's like, is this game night? Come on. Am I providing space for some like secret act? Are we hiding ET? It's like, what am I hosting? It's like, oh, I'm discreet, I'm discreet, I'm discreet. It's like, what does discreet actually mean? It means you're scared to be yourself. So many spell it wrong too. So many spell it D-I-S-C-R-E-T-E. -E. It's like, oh, you're discreet? Thanks for clarifying. I thought I might actually be meeting up with Siamese twins. I'm so glad you could distinguish that you're actually like a separate human being. I don't know. I don't even know if I really want a boyfriend. Sometimes I think I just want an ex to keep me motivated. Is that too much to ask for? Like for real? Hopefully you guys are getting some good ASMR from this. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like life was easier before I came out of the closet. Like that sounds counterintuitive, but I feel like I had a good life back then. Things were just simpler. I wasn't dealing with all this BS. I was telling my friend that and he's like, just go back in. It's like, hmm, I never thought of that closet door being uh, fully swinging, go in and out as I please, like a hotel lobby. But c coming out was, uh, it was definitely difficult for me, dramatic, nerve wracking, very intense. I remember I was upstairs like almost in tears and my, my mom broke down and said like, what is wrong? And then I finally just said it, I'm racist. She's like, I know, now please take that sheet off your head, it's laundry day. Um, my mom was very, uh, She's very accepting, which I really appreciate. She 
She's like, of course, I don't love you the same amount, but that's okay. Uh, my mom used to say, uh, she always like worked hard to provide for my brothers and I. She used to always say like, the only reason I ever stripped was to put you through school. The weird thing is like, I got my GED, so not sure what you're doing up there. She, uh, she's still on the East Coast, so we talk on the phone basically like every day, especially like lately. She likes uh, hearing about the weather out here a lot since she's in New England and it's, it's crappy a lot, of, a lot of months out of the year. She uh, just got out of a relationship with her ex, Pete, who's kind of like a philanderer, can't be trusted, wandering eye type of guy. She uh, had a tough time getting out of the relationship though. She would say like, I'm done, I'm moving on. I gotta get out of this town. Gotta get away from him. Everything here is so dark and dreary. Got four inches again last night. I said, wait, I thought you said you weren't seeing Pete. I don't know. My mom's in her 50s. She looks really good for her age. She looks a lot younger. She obviously wants a man that also looks good for their age, but you know how middle-aged men like to go for like younger women. So it's a little bit more difficult. And she doesn't want to date some like old bag of bones, but I told her, I'll take you to the nursing home if that's what we need to do to get these student loans paid off. I'll introduce you to everyone. Hey mom, this is Jerry Atrick. Meet Arthur Ritus. She'd eventually get into it. She'd be like, you see the bag Jerry got me? That's a colostomy bag. Yeah, there's uh, nothing's open here. So it sucks. It's interesting ever since I'm like, I lived in basically the Mecca, like smack dab in West Hollywood, or as I call it, Jizreel. I lived like right in the middle, but I didn't, I didn't end up like going out in boys town, like all that much. But now that I moved to this side, it's like, oh, I miss it. Like I want to go back. I guess that's how that works. But I'm cool in my new area. It's, it's calm, peaceful. I feel like I'm making the most like out of my time in this quarantine, like trying to be as productive as possible. And like I said, I'm trying to straddle that line between staying informed and going down that like conspiracy rabbit hole, which can be difficult because there's so much nonsense going on. I just wish uh, I could like, hang out with people. Like I, I haven't, I live by myself, so like I haven't seen anyone in a while, and it kind of, it kind of like bums me out. I really want to do stuff, like even like, go on a hike, even go on a walk. Like the bar is set very low. I just want human interaction. But, can't have it. I think a lot of people are paranoid. And it's like, I just wanna go out and do, do something, but a lot of people just don't wanna risk it. Which I get. But, it sucks just like burying my head in a bunch of screens. Such is life. I think I look freaking fresh. All right guys, so that's my get ready routine. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you next time.
Bye.